For as much as I want this thing to be a gunboat, it's just kinda not. Hello, I am Zarkoon, and this is World of Warships Legends. Today we're gonna take another look at the Club Air before it gets removed from my port and I have to grind the Bureau project like everybody else. This is definitely the highest damage game that I've gotten in this ship, and the playstyle that I employ here is primarily torpedo focused. Now, when I took this ship out for the first time, I had it built sorta kinda for a gunboat, and I thought it would make a good gunboat, and I know there are a lot of other people out there who think it would be a good gunboat as well. I got into a game with Spartan Elite 43 the other day, and we were on the same team. I was in the Club Air. Got onto the chat, which is something I don't normally do, but since Spartan's on Xbox, it's not like I ever have any opportunities to play with him in a division, so I thought, you know, I'll chat with him while in the game with him. Could be the only chance I get. Anyway, another guy was in there, and when I was talking about the Club Air, he seemed very skeptical at the idea that it was a better torpedo boat than it is a gunboat. And if you, like him, are skeptical of that, then I don't think you need to look any further than this game for proof. It's going to be a real barn burner. Now, we've entered the Bravo cap on Faultline, and Faultline is... If you're familiar with t -Bull's work, he's done a lot of stuff to try to elucidate the proper ways to play this map because it's often so poorly played, and I don't think we're going to see any exceptions to that rule today. Although, when things start off, it is going to look relatively okay for my team, but it's not going to end up staying okay if you catch my drift. Speaking of catching things, we caught the Massachusetts right on the bow with the torpedo, and that caused flooding. Now, I didn't show my build at the beginning of this video because it's honestly not optimized as a torpedo build. It's more optimized as sort of what I think would function as a gunboat build. And part of the build includes using the rather be torching skill in the legendary skill row of Louis Violet, or Violette, whatever his name is. Base fire chance on the Kleber, 10% pretty dang nasty but with that skill active i've got the fire chance on this build up to 12 percent and it doesn't take too many salvos to start a fire which obviously i wanted to do that that is start a fire on that massachusetts after causing flooding with the torpedo but one of my teammates takes him down and this next sequence is gonna kind of give you an idea of why this thing isn't at least the way i have it set up and i'm not honestly sure how to build it into one, but this is going to show you why this really isn't a gunboat. See these torps? Ooh, look at this dodge. Scrapes the paint right there, but we get away unscathed. Obviously, they came from that Shimakaze, and he's going to start to smoke up. We're going to start to shoot at him and also launch some torpedoes into his smoke screen. The base reload time on the Kleber's guns is 7 seconds, and if I'm not completely mistaken, the base reload time on the Shimakaze's guns is 7.5 seconds. Now, the Kleber has 8 guns in comparison to the Shimakaze's 6 guns, but effectively they have almost the same rate of fire. And you can see with this gunfight going on here that... We're sort of trading pretty evenly because I can't get all my turrets on target and I have to resort to the torpedoes to finally take the Shimakaze out for our first kill. He also disabled my engine, which means I'm not going to be able to stop inside of this capture circle and make immediate use of his smoke screen like I plan to do. Instead, we're going to just kind of glide outside of it until our damage control comes off cooldown pop that, fix the engine, and now we can reverse back into the cap, hopefully get a little bit of use out of this Shimakaze smokescreen, and start shooting at the Amagi and the Iowa out there. Now, that base reload time of 7 seconds, there are ways to cut it down. You could use the gun reload time, or the gun reload mod, rather, in the fourth mod slot, and that's probably going to cut it down into the 6 second range, which is alright. You could also use 
one of the commanders gives you a reduction in reload time on the destroyer's main guns. I think it's Vincent Mordoff. He's one of those fictional commanders. You could also use him, but I think the best you're going to get is somewhere in the range of a six-second reload. And then both Aboyano and Violette come with a skill that sort of functions like the Adrenaline Rush skill on PC. I can't remember what it's called, but the more damage you take, the faster your armaments reload. So you could also run that skill, but even with that, I don't think you're going to get this reload faster than 5 seconds uh, at all. I think the fastest you can probably hope for is five and a half seconds, and to get that, you're going to have to lose a lot of hit points and make use of that adrenaline rush skill, and that really hurts it. And by the way, if you do want to use that reload mod, it increases the turret traverse speed. Turret traverse is 18 seconds base, and using that reload mod is going to increase it to over 20 seconds, which is quite a long time for a destroyer's guns to turn. And I know some people out there don't think turret traverse is a big deal. It really is. It cuts down on your DPM if you have to spend time moving your turrets into position to actually shoot at something. The time it takes for your turrets to move toward a target is time that you're not shooting at the target. But the torpedoes on this thing are just so, so good. This is a fantastic torpedo boat. Look what it can do. It can push right up to this Amagi and Iowa and launch torpedoes very easily off both sides of the ship. It could even do this from stealth if I had stealth specced into my commander build a little bit more. If I put Bay on here as an inspiration, and I don't have him, but if I did have him, I think my concealment would be down to something like 5.3, and I would never even have been spotted doing this. And of course, if you want to spec into concealment more, I'm sure you can get it even lower than 5 kilometers, and if you do that, then it's going to make this kind of move a little bit easier. But now, notice I've gone out here to torpedo these battleships. My team holds two of the three caps. Unfortunately, though, many of them are out of position. We've got one battleship way up here to the north who is coming around chasing this Amagi and Iowa. And in my mind, I thought I could come over here really quick and kill both of these guys so that I could remove them from the game and my teammates' attention would no longer be captured by them. So, you know, maybe they would turn around and shoot at the small flotilla that we've got entering the Bravo cap now. They came all the way from the north, south into Charlie, wrapped around, got in Bravo. These three ships here, the Bismarck and two Alaskas. And these three guys, well, let's just say that I'm going to try. So I've got torpedoes launched at the Bismarck. The Iowa is dead Looks like these torpedoes are on target. Once again, we do get a little bit too close and get spotted momentarily, but we don't shoot at our guns. We don't want these guys to shoot back at us at this kind of close range. And it looks like our torpedoes are going to hit the Bismarck. He actually takes four of them, and I think he was at basically full health. Now look at him. He's got no hit points left. And some more torpedoes, some spare ones, also managed to tag the Alaska. We shoot at the Bismarck, immediately get a fire, but as you can see, we're under heavy, heavy return fire from the Bismarck and the two Alaskas. And by the way, the Bismarck secondaries are reaching out, and I've never in my life felt more threatened by secondaries. Down to 4.2k health, and these guys are about to take Bravo. Nothing I can really do about it. My two battleships don't really seem to be in a great position to deal with these guys. And you would think that these two battleships on my team would have every advantage versus an Alaska and a Bismarck with no health. I don't know how many hit points the other Alaska has, but these guys are very low. They should both be one-shot kills to either of these battleships on my team. And the one closest to me... Looks like he had some good opportunities to get some broadside shots on those two ships, but for whatever reason, it doesn't look like he actually took those opportunities. Plus, 
there's still a Shimakaze alive, and he's going to be a problem. I think that, in retrospect, maybe I shouldn't have gone after the Imagi and the Iowa up here, and instead maybe I should have turned around to try to deal with the other enemy Shimakaze. If I'd done that, maybe this game would have turned out a little bit differently. But as it stands, I can't really get anywhere near that Shimakaze. A, I don't know exactly where he is. I expect... I suspect he is probably heading toward A, since it's the last capture circle we hold, and B, even if I did want to go pursue him, these guys are kind of in my way. So I'm just trying to see if I can get my torpedoes on target against any of them. This Alaska is within my torpedo range right now at 7.9 kilometers, but he was reversing. I predict however, that he's not going to continue reversing for too long, and I put the torpedoes out in front of him. We'll see if that prediction is correct or not here in a moment, but we've got another Alaska coming out. Shouldn't take more than two torpedoes to kill that guy, so we'll leave that be, but looks like my prediction was spot on. The Alaska does indeed start to move forward after taking down one of my battleship teammates there, and we're able to take him out for our third kill of the game. We get the Confederate medal and a devastating strike. Unfortunately, we're being radared, and obviously the radar was not emanating from the Alaska we just sunk, but from the other Alaska, and we're dangerously low on hit points. We do manage to tag that one with another torpedo, but it's not enough to kill him, and his radar is still going. We don't necessarily want to fire our guns now because the time has to be expiring. There it is, the radar goes down. We do take some hits from either the Alaska or the Bismarck, couldn't really tell. Plus, we're going to get tagged by another secondary and reduced to 646 hit points. On the downside, being reduced to this low amount of hit points means that I'm a one-shot kill for any of these ships that even want to breathe in my direction. But on the plus side, I am using that adrenaline rush type skill on my commander, so the reload for my torpedoes and my guns is cut down by quite a bit. And unfortunately, I'm the only one left on my team versus this Alaska and Bismarck and Shimakaze. And I think, had I been able to kill this Alaska and this Bismarck a little bit quicker, it's possible I might have been able to take out the Shimakaze. Earlier in that gunfight with the other Shima, I did not use the main battery reload booster consumable. Had I done that, then the trade between myself and that Shima would have been a lot less even, and he would have been melted a lot quicker. But you only get one main battery reload booster on the Kleber, unless you want to take the base French commander, what's his name, Fournay, I think, and use fully packed. But if you do that, you got to keep in mind that you're giving up the unstoppable skill, or whatever the equivalent is on Violet. He has a skill in the top row of skills that allows you to reduce the incoming splash damage and gain decreased mobility when your engine is knocked out. The unstoppable skill is a legendary skill and, in my opinion, pretty much mandatory for destroyers. What it does is provide you the increased mobility after your engine is destroyed. And if your engine gets destroyed in the Kleber, you don't have a smoke screen, so you're dead in the water without that skill, which is probably why you wouldn't necessarily want to use fully packed on Fournay. Did you see those torpedoes I sent at the Alaska, by the way? They came so close to hitting him, and it would only really take one. He's also a one-shot kill if I elect to use my guns, but I don't want to do that. Not with the Bismarck right here. If the Bismarck wasn't here, then I would do that. But we've only got one minute left to go in this game. Actually, less than one minute. So, I'm probably going to be able to take these guys out. Looks like at least one set of these torpedoes is on target. And it's going to finish off the Bismarck. So, as soon as he goes down, turn to the Alaska. Fire a salvo, pop the reload booster just in case. We don't need it, though. Double strike, and there's the Kraken Unleashed as the Alaska finishes us off and 
we lose. Very painful game. Not a fun loss to experience, let's just say. I was honestly shocked that it happened this way, which is why I'm sitting here looking at the campaign milestones tick up. But yeah, in any case, win or loss, that's not really the point of this video. The point is that the Club Air is a fearsome torpedo boat. More fearsome, I would say, than the Shimakaze. And over the Shimakaze, it at least has better guns. Look at that, 300 more XP than the top player on the loot, on the winning team, rather. Crazy game, I wish it had been a victory, but sometimes that's how it goes. Hope you enjoyed the video, if so, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.